Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poopa. So welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. Ah, yes. It's election night here in the United States. Ah. So, I voted earlier today, so that's very cool. Talk about that in just a moment. But, do want to uh, welcome you aboard if this is your first time joining me. It's very, very casual. Just hanging out, playing games, miniatures, games, what have you. Once in a while, we'll talk a little PC gaming. Sometimes a little pop culture. But, for the most part, it's uh, all about the tabletop in these here parts. And, of course, do want to also point out that if you like this video please give it a quick thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you do subscribe ding that bell it'll not only let you know when i stream the daily dope live monday through thursday nights right here on youtube it'll also let you know when i share other videos such as my upcoming review for static dawn yes it's in the can it'll be up uh, tomorrow things were kind of hectic today so, but uh, it will be up tomorrow. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Be sure to get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Because this is a live stream, that means there is chat available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But I do my best to pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. So far, who was first out the gate? Let's see. Who was first out the gate? It was a great day. A great day. Wishing me a happy election day. So we've got a great day. The madman is in his usual spot as one of our moderators. Jorge Rodriguez is making an early appearance in chat. Viper Dave. We haven't seen Viper Dave in a while. Good to see Viper Dave popping in. The man man mentions that his 103-year-old grandmother voted today. Sweet. And Jorge Rodriguez says, uh, thanks to me, me, not Jorge, me, Jeff, me, uh, I'm rubbing off on him because now he says howdy to people off the internet. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I just, I got into that when I lived out West. I lived out in Arizona and uh, it was just something a little different than just saying hi, hi. I'd be like, howdy, what's going on? What's going on? Kabuki Kid is in chat as well. So we're going to jump in. We got uh, a good yeah, good mix of news tonight. But first off, I I voted this morning. So I like to I like to go in on election day. So I was like, you know what? I got a mask. I'm cool. I got, you know, hand sanitizer, all that stuff. I'm going to go vote. And out by where I live, it's like in and out. I, I really feel bad for these people who get stuck waiting hours to vote. That's just not right. I hate, I, out of all these, all the things that go on in elections, the thing I despise the most is voter suppression. Man, it just frosts my ass. Because, you know what, if you want to win fair and square, if you roll out a better candidate or, you know, 
you're politically more savvy as far as your campaign goes and you win, that's great. If you win by stopping people who have the right to vote from voting, not right. Not right in my book. So anyway, so I went and voted, and they didn't have any stickers. So it was kind of funny. I slipped my ballot in. I was voter 300. My ballot was 300, I guess. And uh, the poll watcher, well, she wasn't a poll watcher. She was, she was actually working the poll. She said, uh, drop your pen off here where the used pens were, and um, there's hand sanitizer. And I, I asked, oh, so there's no I voted sticker this year? And she said, no, we're out of them. <laughs> so I said, uh, then could I get my ballot back? So I wasn't able to sit there and like send out a selfie with my little, I was going to put it on my mask. I was going to put it on my mask. I voted, you know, outside the polling place. So much for that idea. So much for that idea, everybody. So hopefully those of you in the U.S. who are registered to vote did vote. Uh, you know what? If you're out on the West Coast and you're registered to vote and you're watching this show, what are you doing if you haven't voted yet? <laughs> Get out there and go vote. You still got time. Still got some time to get your vote in. Do your civic duty. I mean, it, that's what it really is. It is your civic duty to vote. And it doesn't, I'm not talking only in presidential elections. I mean, whenever you have an election day, take the time out to learn a little bit about the candidates who are running and, and you know, cast your vote. I think uh, far too many people just are like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, they vote every four years and then that's it. And then they complain about the people who represent them. And it's like, well, you didn't vote. You didn't have your say. All right. So Kevin R. Smith is in chat with us. So we've got uh, some folks talking about uh, how they voted. Kevin says he voted a week and a half ago. No lines. Yeah, there was no line where I voted today. Beat Cafe is in chat with us as well. So it looks like we got uh, some folks who are looking to kind of kick back and take a break from the election news for a little bit as these polls close and, uh, you know, results start rolling in. Uh, John Bogle's here. I maybe didn't mention John. So if I didn't, sorry. Howdy, John. Welcome aboard. If I did say hi, well... You get a double hello. There we go. All right. So everybody's talking about how uh, people voted by mail. So <laughs> so Kevin says, the Kabuki kid, I can't watch the election results without somebody to discuss them with. Yes, you know, to be honest, sometimes I'm the opposite. I prefer to sit there and watch the election results come in by myself. And then that way I just can, you know, I don't I don't want to commiserate <laughs> with somebody else. I just want to sit there and be like, <laughs> all right, let's jump on into the news because that's why you're here. You're here to hang out, have some fun, talking to people in chat. You're not you're here to avoid the election talk. So let's jump on into the news because there is a golf themed board game that's coming. It's actually arriving, as far as I know, next week from Seabrook Studios. Here's the dope on 18 Holes. 18 Holes is a golf-themed strategy game with a modular board and multiple ways to play. 18 Holes can be played solo, in teams, or as a four-player versus match. Players build a course as a social activity or use one of the pre-designed courses that come with the game or are shared online by other players. The course layout then informs which clubs will work better and the players draft their hand from the deck of clubs, as in golf clubs, not the suit of clubs. There are a few duplicates in the deck, and each club has a different ability. I wonder if they have the clubs that I use, which uh, actually add strokes to play. <laughs> That's the special ability of any club I use. Doesn't matter. Iron, wood, driver. Yeah, they all, they're all like... They're all like plus ones. They're my magic golf clubs. They're all plus ones. 
Each turn, players use one of their club cards to access one or more shot decks. The shot decks contain cards that help the player move through the course. Each club can only be used once per hole, forcing players to consider which club they use next. Not all shot cards go straight, and there is no requirement for players to stay on course. Hitting off course on purpose allows players to press their luck in the hope of getting the advantage. The first player to navigate their way from the first green to the 18th wins. That's kind of odd. A secondary game mode is Chaos Golf, where each green is assigned a large and small points token. Players can hit it in any direction and attempt to collect as many tokens as they can. The game ends when all large tokens have been claimed, and the player with the most points wins. 18 holes is for one to five players. I have seen a couple of conflicting reports. I've seen one to four players uh, on like Board Game Geek, but then on the official website, it says one to five. So I'm going to believe the one to five. It's for one to five players, probably. Age is 13 and up. Plays in about 30 to 60 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $80 when it arrives next week. So this could be interesting. Could be kind of cool. I find it kind of weird that it's the, the way you win is to actually navigate the golf course and be done first. As opposed to like having a golf score. So... So here's the weird, here, so here's the kind of the odd thing, right? So I, I figure this is, of course, a game that is aimed towards people who probably like golf, watch golf, play golf. So I, I find it kind of odd that whoever finishes the golf course first wins as opposed to having like a stroke play aspect to it. Plus, because it is aimed at golfers, I believe that's why it's probably carrying this $80 price tag because golfers tend to pay extra for whatever. This, I mean, this does look kind of cool. It, it looks like it's got a nice table presence. That's for sure. So there is some discussion in chat. Hey, who's spoiling Thelma and Louise out there? <laughs> Grady's like, hey, sorry if I ruined the movie for anybody. I don't know, the movie's only, what, 30 years old? Maybe not that old. Maybe it's about 25 years old. I think once a movie or TV show has been around for five years, that's it. You can, you can tear, tear the Band-Aid off, you know? It's like there's no more spoiler alerts as far as those things go. All right, moving right along. There is a new game coming in December from Weird Giraffe Games. Here's the dope on Tumble Town. Build the best tiny town in the West in this town and engine building game. Well, obviously, it says you're building a town, so it is a town building game. For one to four players that plays in about 45 minutes. As a mayor of a small community, it's up to you to construct the best town possible. Choose from a selection of building plans chosen at the last town meeting and get constructing. Each building plan lets you mine a certain type of material and shows what values of materials are needed to build as each building has different requirements. Buildings can give you different abilities to be used on each of your turns from manipulating the dice materials to be different values to being able to transform specific die materials into other materials to giving you extra points for building certain types of buildings. You draft building plans. Only certain buildings are available each round, so draft the plans that work best in your town. There's dice manipulation. Certain buildings can let you manipulate the dice, making it easier to continue building. Buildings require certain dice types, so take strategically, so take strategically to make sure you can complete your town. I think take is supposed to be think. It's like, so take strategically. Let's try it with the, the correct word I would think it should be. Buildings require certain dice types. So think strategically to make sure you can complete your town. 
And there's also a spatial puzzle aspect to the game. Place your constructed buildings along Main Street. Out on Main Street. Always like that song. Create your town. The townspeople want a specific look for the town, and if you meet their requirements, you'll gain even more prestige. Can you build the best town in the West? Tumble Town is for one to four players, ages eight and up. Plays in around 40 to 60 minutes, and we'll carry an MSRP of $39.99 when the game hits stores in December. So, a great aces with kids, this game would tumble for sure. Actually, I am a little surprised where it's ages eight and up, and there's dice that kids swallow. <laughs> little kids. And personally, I would think an eight-year-old should be smart enough not to be putting stuff like that in their mouths, but who knows? I don't know. We got this oddball thing with 14 and up here in the U.S. and nonsense like that. So Great A says Jenga is full failure at their house. Uh, I actually uh, won a lot of money playing giant Jenga one time in a bar in Phoenix. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was Phoenix. I think, if I remember right, I think it was Chandler. Anyway. So, Tumble Town is arriving next month. Let's move along, because there is a fun-looking... It looks like it's a card game. It's up for Kickstarter funding from newcomers Tally Mark Entertainment. Tally Mark! Oh, I'm sorry, that's Tally Ho. Here's a dope on Captain's Log, Crisis Detected. Captain's Log, Crisis Detected is a competitive card game for three to five players where you face off against your fellow opponents to see who can command their fleet to victory. It's a family-friendly game for all ages, eight to 100 years old. Easy to learn. It's got quick gameplay, finishes up in under an hour. Fast-moving game turns with fun table interaction. Players go in turn order and strategically decide how to best attack other players, protect their own ships, and make it out of the game with the most victory points. Uh -huh. So it looks like we dropped for a second. Weird. Very strange, because uh, to be honest, up until this point, we weren't really seeing uh, a whole lot of, like, drop frames and stuff. I don't know. I wonder if uh, Xfinity's back to our shit connection that we had before. I called up, and they, oh, yeah, well, didn't, didn't have a problem. Everything's fine. And then suddenly everything was fine again. I wonder. I'll have to find out. All right, anyway, the game is made up of a deck of cards that will provide the crew cards to save and protect your ships crisis cards to attack others' ships, and command cards to interact and interfere with other players on your turn, and maybe even on their turn. As play continues, you may find yourself having to rely on other players forming a mini-alliance. Be careful, though, as an alliance can only last so long. Yeah, it's like we're playing diplomacy. Only one player can be crowned the most victorious. Be ready to strategize, calculate, backstab, and deceive the other players to victory. Oh, yes, this is a kumbaya game. That's for certain not. All right, there is a short Kickstarter video. It's about two minutes long. So let's kick back and give it a peek. Captain's Log. Not a single crisis has been detected. I'm doing amazingly well. Crew morale has never been higher. The ship has never been safer. Uh, Captain, I think the situation is worse than you think. What do you mean? Well, the crew is actually rioting and looks to be declaring a mutiny, and we're actually lost. I have everything under control. Prepare the escape pods. Captain's Log, Crisis Detected, is a competitive card game where players command a fleet of spaceships carrying precious cargo. Be alert, you are not alone. 
There are three to five players, and they are all trying to destroy your ships. Sabotage your opponents by playing crisis cards to destroy their ships. Utilize your trusty crew to save your ships in time. Leverage commands to outwit your opponents. Build alliances for support in your time of need. Trade with other players, but be careful. Those smiles could be a devious setup. A trusted ally or a backstabbing enemy. Survive the onslaught to deliver your cargo to victory. We're recruiting you. Claim your fleet of ships and support Captain's Log. Crisis detected. We're ready to blast off. Join us as we launch in five, four, three, two. Oh, that's our fifth player. I be the captain now. Yar. Dude, we're in space. I told him it was space, captains. Let's blast off. Captain's Log Crisis Detected is for three to five players, ages 12 and up. Plays in around 30 to 45 minutes. You can reserve a copy of the game for a $20 pledge through November 19th. And expected delivery is in June of 2021. So this looks like this could be kind of fun, sort of along the lines of um, that game that uh, they stopped production of, <laughs> Red Shirts. <laughs> It'd be all right. I have to point out, I think that um, Tally Mark, is that the name of the company? Yes, Tally Mark Entertainment would have been better served with a video that focused on the components and the gameplay as opposed to sh showing the people sitting around the table playing and then the other people pop in at the end. I mean, I get it. I understand. These, some of these people don't want their little time in the, in the spotlight, but this is not funded yet. So it's, I think it's about 60% of the way. And I got to be honest, I think that video is probably doing less good <laughs> than it could be. Anyway, but I thought I'd share it because it's kind of fun. It's got kind of a, yeah, you know, sort of a Star Trek-ish vibe to it. All right, let's talk about some role-playing game news. Because now available from Monty Cook Games is Beasts of Flesh and Steel. This is for 5E. I've got the dope. Bring something unexpected to your 5th edition game with scores of weird and wondrous science fantasy creatures. The Lakotic Courier single-mindedly delivers strange devices to ancient ruins, sometimes traveling great distances and facing incredible hardships to do so. Why? What's the significance of the cargo or the destination? Nobody knows but don't get in its way. Like a hermit crab seeking out empty shells, the Caliptine crab makes its home in ancient devices. It often gains unexpected and powerful abilities from its dwelling, making it an unpredictable foe. The silvery liquid Nemesis communicates by swapping memories, literally stealing those of its target while implanting its own startling thoughts. It changes form rapidly, even splitting into multiple attackers, and can sometimes steal a character's abilities to use against them. Add an element of the truly unexpected to your 5th edition game with this fantastic assortment of science fantasy creatures born in the ninth world. The award-winning, critically acclaimed setting created by legendary game designer Monty Cook. Beasts of Steel, I should say, Beasts of Flesh and Steel contains 140 fascinating, dangerous new monsters that bring a science fantasy element to your encounters. But where the carnivorous color, a predator unlike anything from our dimension, the awakened ruin that breaks from its original location to prowl the landscape, and the shadowy clicker, which hunts any creature that makes sound. So we've got CR's challenge ratings ranging from 1 to 25. So you always have loads of challenges for parties at every level. Stunning artwork that shows off each of these weird and wondrous creatures and a convenient layout that makes this book uniquely easy to use in prep and at the game table. 
It's a complete bestiary with everything you need to bring these monsters to your game table. These creatures complement Arcana of the Ancients, but you don't need that book to use this one. Add these creatures to any 5e game. Right now, the 190-page PDF is available at DriveThruRPG for $17.99. 99 nice. These, these look really bizarre. These look very, very strange sort of hybrid creatures. Although the one that they're showing right now rem reminds me of, um, the, what the hell is Roman? Isn't it called Roman? The, the, uh, the crappy, like, it's not, I won't even give it a, a, like a B movie. I would think it's a D movie where it's the, uh, gorilla suits with the diving helmet on it, on its head. Wasn't it called, wasn't it, isn't that creature called a Roman? <laughs> just, I don't know. For some reason, it's just, that's right there. It's just the vibe that I'm getting. Just the vibe I'm getting. But this could be pretty cool, pretty interesting as well. So let's move on to the final news piece for tonight because there is a new adventure that's arrived for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. I've got the dope on fateful night on the night of memory the people of bright spear gathered to remember those that were lost during the necro quake but as these spirians mourn their dead restless spirits rise once again to terrorize the city and claim bright spear as their own on this fateful night the light of bright spear may finally go out the city of bright spear is overrun by spirits and wraiths as a powerful Minmorn Banshee tries to open a gateway to the realm of death. The party must battle their way through streets filled with death and despair and fight their way to Domini University to end the ritual that would see Bright Spear fall to ruin. Faithful Night is a horror-themed adventure for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound that is perfect for a single night's play. The adventure pits the party against hordes of undead, including a deadly Lord Executioner and a powerful Mere Morn Banshee. This PDF also includes two one-page adventures that can expand the scenario for play over multiple sessions. The 18-page PDF is available right now at DriveThruRPG for $3.99. Cool. I have not really taken a look at Soulbound. Sammy did a review of it and was very, very pleasantly surprised. She was not expecting it to be as cool as it was. So, but like I said, I have not taken a peek at it. So, uh, as far as Roman, a great A says, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was the robot monster. Was that the movie's name? Robot monster. I, I forget. I, I, to be honest, I, I think I've only seen it as, an episode of MST3K. I don't think I've ever seen the movie just as it is without the, uh, the, <laughs> the robots. And, and uh, I think, I'm trying to remember who was the host back then. I think it was Joel. I think Joel was the host of that, was, was hosting back then. He was always, he was always my favorite. I was not, I was not a big fan of Mike. He was fine. But to me, I, Joel was my guy. So there we have it. There is our news. A great day says, yes, Roman was the, was the creature's name. And then it all turns out to be a dream. Oh, I hope I haven't spoiled it for anybody. <laughs> somebody pointed out, I forget it, it's way back up in chat. Somebody pointed out that um, Thelma and Louise is 29 years old. So... So Great Ace is actually Roman Extension XJ2. <laughs> yeah, well, I think everybody just called him Roman. If I remember correctly, I think it was the kid. The kid was like narrating the film. And then it turns out it's the, the it's just the kid having a dream. So yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, kid. You're eating too much cereal with sugar in it if you're thinking of that stuff. All right, so that is it for tonight's news. Anywho, so what is on the horizon? Once again, 
Uh, I mentioned this last night. I, if, if nobody's interested, that's, that's fine. But I did point out that... Um, leave a comment if you'd like to see a La Resistance contest to win all the La Resistance goodies I received. But uh, if you're not interested, that's fine. It's okay. I mean, I don't have to be doing giveaways. I don't, I don't have to give away anything. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was a pretty quick jaunt through the news. Let's see. Is anything else? Oh, yeah. I can show you what's on the horizon. So as I mentioned, I kind of mentioned this yesterday, too. It's like. But that review uh, is going to be up. I'll pop it up tomorrow. I was going to do it today, but uh, I had actually yesterday I had to take my mom for cataract surgery. And then it turned out uh, it was actually her second eye she was having done. And it was not as uh, carefree, I guess we'll say, as the first time. So, yeah, so that was uh, something that was going on today. She had to go have a follow-up. I had to go take her for that. So, all right. So what is on the horizon here? Let's see. Okay, so... I've got some more RPG stuff. Oh, I know what I could I could mention. I did a news piece maybe about a week ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, for Black Sword Hack, which is based on it's role playing game, based on the Black Hack, but it's it's really kind of devoted to kind of the Elric of Melna Melna Bonnet sort of Michael Moorcock Eternal Champion kind of stories and I got an email from the author asking me if I wanted to actually check it out and I said yeah sure you know I'm I'm always happy to I like the black hack I think the black hacks good good rules light fantasy OSR kind of game I I definitely dig the way that it tracks inventory so you're not sitting there going oh, okay and there's another okay so there's there's a another arrow gone, but I got to roll. I got to roll to see if I can actually get that back. So Kabuki Kid says that she always pronounces it as Mel Nib One. Actually, I do believe I pronounced it correctly, Mel Nib One. And uh, I do believe if you check out the audio books that they did, Audible did. I think they only did the first two. Cause I guess they weren't popular enough, but uh, yeah. Oh, I big, my, I'm a big Michael Moorcock fan. It, well, okay. I, I take that back. I'm a big eternal champion novels of Michael Moorcock fan. I was never really into like Jerry Cornelius or some of his later stuff. Then again, I was reading it when I was like 14, 15 years old. So maybe I would actually like it. <laughs> like his, his like more modern stuff. Anyway, so that is being sent for me to check out. So I also have a review of Pathfinder the Slithering. That's on the horizon, as well as Chapter 3 of Agents of Edgewatch, All or Nothing. So these are on the horizon as well. I got to be honest, I have no idea if I'm going to see more Bizo stuff because they sent me the, just this big, massive amount of content. So I am working my way through reviewing those. Sammy's actually going to review the Starfinder adventures. So we've got that. And um, I don't know. It's like I've, I've had people email me asking, hey, when am I going to do a review for the Pathfinder second edition beginner box, which I don't even think is out yet. Maybe it is. I don't know. I thought it comes out next week. I know it comes out in PDF. I think it's out on PDF on the 11th. Something like that. And my response has been, I don't know. I don't know if I'll see it. So it's it's kind of weird. I You know, I have a, a nice relationship with Paizo. It's just the way things get sent, it's kind of odd. Just like I got uh, the previous Adventure Path for Pathfinder. Uh, Extinction Curse. I got the first chapter to review, and I did a review of that. 
And then months later, I got the last chapter. And it's sort of like, so uh, how do I do a review of this? It's like, oh, it's like, okay. So Kabuki Kid says, I always used to pronounce Arrakis. I, I assume we're talking about Dune. Like how Iron Maiden sang it. I am not sure how they sang it. All right. So, uh, th so that's what's on the horizon. I got some other stuff too. Uh, some other more board games, things like that, uh, that are coming. Uh, Villagers is a review that I should have up this week. I might have few, in, the few and cursed as well. The review for that up this week. I'm not sure. Um, all I can say is right now, I don't happen to have, um, I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> I mean, there, I got a, I got, I got a lot of stuff to review. So, a great ace says that they heard it's Thanksgiving week that the box set comes out. Yeah, because normally, normally it is towards the end of the month that this stuff comes out. But I don't know. It's usually, yeah, usually the end of the month is when Pathfinder stuff comes out. But it almost seemed like, for for some reason, this month, it looked like things were out earlier. I don't know. I have, like I said, I have no clue. We'll have to see. Also waiting to see when um, the uh, Taj, what what is it? Tasha's Cauldron of Everything arrives from uh, Wizards of the Coast, because that's supposed to hit stores this month as well. I'm kind of getting a feeling that this is going to be another book that drops like a couple of days before it hits stores for reviewers. So I don't know. Anyway, so a great A says they had advanced copies. Not sure where they went. Well, they didn't come my way. <laughs> I can tell you that much. At least not yet. All right, that is it for tonight's show. Once again, if you like the video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, if you do subscribe, ding that bell. Because it'll not only let you know when the Daily Dope streams live, Monday through Thursday nights, right here on YouTube. It also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my upcoming review for All or Nothing. I'll take all, please. All right, of course, everybody who was hanging out watching live tonight, thank you very much. I was very surprised. We had as many people hanging out as we did seeing, and I do understand that we do have some viewers and hanging out in chat where it's, they're not in the United States. It's actually morning for them. But I, I am kind of surprised that I had as many people hanging out on election night as we have. So we get to go back to seeing what's going on in ye old election. So I'm not saying anything else. Every time I, whenever I mention something about politics, people get mad. So all I said was go vote. That's all I was saying. All right. Anyway, so for those of you who watched live, thank you very much. I always appreciate you hanging out and keeping me company as I babble on into the ether. But then again, if you don't have an opportunity to watch live, maybe you end up watching on Memorex. Thank you very much as well. Really, really do appreciate everybody who, who takes time to watch any of the videos on the channel. I really, really do. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I seriously do. Especially during this never-ending pandemic. Because if I didn't have this to do, I would probably go out of my mind. Although I might be out of my mind already. You just don't know. All right. Anyway. Everybody enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. I will be back tomorrow. And of course, as I sign out during this god-awful pandemic that doesn't end, I hope everyone out there is being smart and staying safe. See you tomorrow. Oh, you're still here. Well, 
Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, click right here. And of course, if you want to see one of the latest episodes of the Daily Dope, click right on up here. And if you want to roll the dice, take your chances, see what YouTube thinks you might like from the channel, give a click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and I'll see you next time.